Welcome to Mission Control Houston, and we have a special guest, as mentioned earlier, Mario Runco, a veteran of uh, three space shuttle missions to orbit, and he has uh, a lot of experience in Earth observations. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was one of the principals in designing and getting the window observational research facility up to the International Space Station, which uses a special optical quality window to allow uh, the very best photography of the Earth below by astronauts aboard the orbiting outpost. Welcome, Mario. Well, thank you, uh, Kyle. Appreciate it. Uh, glad to be here. Great to have you here, too. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your space flights. Well, uh, as you mentioned, I, I did three uh, back in the 90s, mid-91 through 96 uh, on the space shuttle. And that was uh, when I was involved with the space flights there. That was the start of my passion for uh, Earth observation and uh, utilizing the space platform for uh, studying the Earth. And we had a picture of you, and it was a little hard to find pictures of you <laughs> all by yourself because uh, apparently you were the guy behind the camera most of the time. Yes, sir. I was uh, I, I was a shutter bug on board trying to document not only uh, what we did on board, but also uh, uh, the out-the-window views, which were spectacular, to, to say the least. Well, so tell us, I know you brought some of the your favorite beauty shots. Tell us a little okay. bit about Earth observations from on orbit. Well, uh, it would be a pleasure. Well, first, firstly, the, when you get up on orbit it, it, and you get your first view outside the window, it is strikingly beautiful, breathtaking. The adjectives and the superlatives could not describe the, the feeling and sense of uh, beauty that you get. I have one image uh, of, of what we uh, what we see very, very commonly on orbit, and that's uh, of a sunset. And one of the things about sunsets, and you may not think of astronauts uh, being in the space business and, and be, being very technical as being romantic, but on board, uh, whenever there's a sunrise or a sunset, the, 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 the call goes out on board and uh, somebody yells sunrise or sunset and everybody kind of, when they have the opportunity, drops what they're doing and for the few moments uh, runs up to the window or floats up to the window and, uh, and watches uh, uh, the sunset. And, and it is spectacularly beautiful. The, the good news is we can see that uh, 16 times every day as we orbit the Earth uh, every 90 minutes. So that's, and, and it is really, really spectacular, as, as you might have seen in the image there. And, and there's some other places on the planet that, that also jump out at you. If you, if you go to uh, a Google Earth map or something like that and, and just kind of look at the Western Hemisphere, you'll see in the eastern, uh, Western Atlantic, east off the east coast of the U.S. in the, in the Bahamas, you'll see this bright turquoise spot. And, and if you get in a close-up, which I, we have here uh, for the viewers here, uh, there's a place called Tongue of the Ocean, and my uh, being an oceanographer, uh, this is a very uh, not only strikingly beautiful place, but it's a place to study and, and uh, has has uh, a lot of uh, uh, interesting features. You can see the, the the dark blue area. It looks it looks obviously like a, a giant tongue, and hence the name. But that is very very deep water, and just to the to the south below. Uh, the bottom of the tongue, you see some sand dunes there, uh, and that's very shallow water, and, and you can see the ripples caused by the waves in the sand at the bottom of the ocean, even from space, and that's Andros Islands off to the west. It, again, just the, the, the deep blues and the turquoises there are, are, are spectacular. Really beautiful. And then, so tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, activities that go on aboard the space station. Okay. Uh, well, on the space station, uh, you know, we do have the cupola windows and we have the uh, Destiny Module Laboratory window. Uh, their their optical quality. The the lab window has the scratch pane removed, so we can do science and remote sensing. And uh, there is the, as you mentioned earlier, the window observational research facility, uh, into which we put remote sensing and photographic equipment that can be operated either by the crew or from the ground. In the case, like uh, he, we see here, Chris Hatfield installing uh, our latest payload called iServe, uh, which is uh, a payload designed uh, to monitor uh, disaster areas around the planet, whether they be from tornadoes, as it happened in Moore, Oklahoma, uh, or uh, tsunamis, hurricanes, whatever the case may be, and, 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 and the ability of the camera to, to frequently 
overfly the same place many times is an advantage that the space station has that many of our Earth observation satellites do not have because most of them are sun-synchronous orbit and they pass over once every 16 days. So as things change, we can indeed get uh, uh, many, many updates and imagery provided the cloud cover uh, is available. And, the, and that's a joint activity uh, between NASA and the USAID, right. or you said, agency that tracks these kinds of disasters around the world. And they put in requests uh, to the, the, the uh, payload uh, folks, and then they, they train the camera to take the, in, uh, the, the image. In this case, uh, uh, the ISERV instrument is a 9-inch telescope, and it, it's a little unusual, and it's about as large as we can put into the, uh, the WARFRAC, the, uh, uh, the abbreviation for Window Observational Research Facility. And, uh, but we had to do something a little bit different. And uh, most telescopes, uh, reflecting telescopes, with the, which this one is, has the uh, secondary mirror that bounces the, the light that comes off of the mirror to the eyepiece. Well, that's removed, and the camera is actually on the front end of the, the, the telescope. It blocks a little bit of the field of view, as does the secondary mirror, uh, but it allows for a wider footprint uh, so when if you're not exactly precise on your pointing, you can still acquire the, the, the place on the ground that you're trying to image. Okay. Yeah. That, well, you've got some more images. Tell us about yeah. these. Okay. The, the next image up uh, is, is uh, an image from uh, our Isaac payload, which is International Space Station Agricultural Camera. This was a multispectral camera. It had uh, ba three bands, green, red, and infrared. And you see here the image, in, the red area on the image is the area that the, that the Isaac camera took. And it is overlaid on a uh, Landsat thematic mapper uh, visible image. And what is interesting about uh, when you do multispectral, in this case, uh, uh, the green, red, and near-infrared, if you do a, a combination of the, uh, uh, the, the bands, you get a false color composite, as you have here. And what is striking is it brings up the vegetation, shows up in red rather than green, but then it is very sensitive to differences in vegetation. So you can monitor the health of forests, of crops, and, and, and one of the things here, this is Port Charlotte, uh, Florida, and you can see some, right toward the center of the picture, you can see some brighter red areas of a different shade, and that's the ability of the camera to discern the, the difference in vegetation and the health of the vegetation. In that case, those brighter red areas are actually golf courses. So they're much more uh, they're wet, they're, they're, they're greener, and, and so uh, I use this image as an example to, to that, that shows when a plant is either very healthy or, or stressed, you can detect that from uh, the space platform. And so farmers uh, around the country are able to use these images to help check on how their crops are doing if they're tied into the system. Right, and, and they, they were through the, uh, the Space Operations Center at the University of North Dakota, the, 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 where, from where the uh, Isaac camera came. And this camera, uh, actually, they, they were, were taking images, and, the, and what we're in the short growing season in the upper Midwest is very critical that nothing goes wrong, otherwise the crop is lost, and, and then, it will, of course, profit and, and, and livelihood. So uh, they use the, the images to monitor the crops that if they have an issue in the field, they can go to that particular spot uh, in their field, and it has the resolution to do that. And what you can do is, it, let's say there's a fungal infection in a root crop like sugar beets. They can go out and then diagnose the problem uh, in the area, by the fungicide and address the problem. The, the benefit environmentally is that I can target specifically the area rather than in the past where practices were that you'd have to do the entire field or the entire acreage rather than the, the area that of concern. So and that was. And that I imagine that also helps to keep that kind of a problem from spreading to other farms uh, exactly, and crops. Exactly. It, 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 it's it's a win-win. It saves the farmer money. He doesn't have to spend as much on the on the in this case fungicide, for example, and he doesn't have to uh, spread as much around the environment. Which then, once it's in the environment, it goes into the water table and the streams and all of that. So so uh, again, it's it it it's it's an advance in technology that really helps. Uh, day-to-day -day work around the planet, and in this case, uh, raising our, our food crop. 
and theoretically lower prices at the grocery store if yes. you don't have to spend that much money exactly. taking care of your crops. Exactly. So uh, it, it, it all goes in, in, and and actually the, the, the farmers are pretty, I mean, technologically, they, they are, the, I had learned in dealing with them uh, that they they are pretty savvy technologically. They stay at the leading edge because it, it, it behooves them to do so. All right. Now, I think we probably have time for one more image, Mario. Let's take a look at the next one that you had. Okay. This one is uh, from our iServe payload, and this one is uh, happens to be of the Grand Canyon. Uh, you can see it running right down the, the, the center of the uh, photograph, and this is the Colorado River, of course, running through the Grand Canyon in Arizona. And then this is an example of what sort of the iServe payload can do. It, it would narrow in and zoom in on a particular area, and let's say the Co Colorado River were flooding, and it would overspill its banks, of course not at the Grand Canyon, that would be a, a big flood, but uh, uh, this is just an example, but you would be able to see the extent of where the flooding uh, had occurred and, and manage and then help uh, area responders uh, with that information to manage and, and address the situation locally. So uh, it, it is designed to help with uh, uh, disaster assistance uh, primarily. Well, Mario Renko, thank you so much for joining us today. And, you know, you have a really interesting background uh, <laughs> from the Bronx and your former police officer, yes, oceanographer and all that. And I want to let everybody know that you also went to Rutgers in New Jersey. Yes, and we have a distance learning network event coming up a little bit later on today at 11.05 a.m. Central Time. And Mario Renko is going to be talking with students at a school in New Jersey at that time. So we'll look forward to continuing on our discussions with you later today, Mario. And thanks thank for coming and talking to us about crew Earth observations from the International Space Station. Appreciate it, Kyle. Thank you.